Hi everybody, welcome. My name is Shannon and I am one of the co-founders of Salt and Clay Magazine. And we are here today to learn how to put a charcuterie board together. And there is no one better to show us how to do this than the garden editor of Salt and Clay, Jill Fawcett. And you're gonna show me how to do this? Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Shannon. Of Thanks course. for that sweet intro. Of course. Anyways, welcome to my home and welcome to Charcuterie 101. When you make a charcuterie board, variety is king. So think different elements, different textures, different colors. So let's start with crackers. Crackers, try a variety of different crackers on your charcuterie board. These are the fruity ones. These are gluten-free. I'm gluten-free, so I like to use gluten-free options on my board. Um, long, flat ones are fabulous as well. Also, on this tray right here, I have a variety of nuts. Nuts are great on a charcuterie board. So is dried fruit because it's such a pretty element and adds a little color to go along with those crackers. What do we need? Well, probably dips. Dips, yep. Okay, cheese. Cheese, yep. And okay. meats. Oh yes, okay. So dips, cheeses, and meats. Let's talk about- <laughs> This is why you need to be telling us what we need. <laughs> Let's talk about our meats right now. I like a variety of just great charcuterie meats or cured meats like prosciutto, salami, and you know, that you buy that Italian package at Costco and all of these come in it. I can't, I don't remember the name of this one. Do you remember the name I of this? Oh, is that a uh, Rosola? We'll call it that. Okay. Okay. Variety of meats because you need some fat to go with your saltiness. So that's a good, yeah. You just even spreading them out like that. I mean, do you, would you have people just take those with their fingers or how would you? When we do the board, we're going to do the board. We're going to show you how to assemble it after we introduce all these. Uh, no, that's okay. That's a great question. <laughs> but it, you can do little forks. You can, I have little pinchers. You know, or tongs, <laughs> I think it's what it's called. So tongs are a great option for your meats. Let's move on to the cheeses, because cheese is, you can't live without it. Cheese is like, well, crackers, cheese, meats, I said something earlier was king, but I think cheese is actually the king. Whatever that was before is queen. <laughs> so, so you want a variety of cheeses. You want your hard cheeses, you want your soft cheeses. I prefer goat and sheep's cheese, just because I hear that that's a little easier to digest at our age. Yeah, so what I have here is I have a nice mozzarella, marinated mozzarella balls. Manchango is my absolute favorite cheese in the whole world. It's a sheep's cheese. We, I love the texture of crumbling up a cheddar. This is a coastal cheddar that I bought at Costco and it crumbles really lovely. I just, it's like, it comes in a brick, yeah. and I just take a knife and kind of like hack at it a little bit, and then I break, yeah. break right. pieces. Kind of yeah, break yeah, I'll get a bigger chunk and then break that bigger chunk down. So it just crumbles really yeah, lovely. Great. This cheese right here is a smoked cheddar, and I love it for the coloring and the flavor. Smoked is a great flavor to add to your charcuterie. Then I have some soft cheeses. I have a goat's cheese, and I also have a cheese that has some garlic, garlic herbs in it. Is Excuse me. The Borgian cheese. Borgian cheese, exactly. So these are super easy to find cheeses. Trader Joe's and Costco is where I got all of this. I did throw together just a little something something because I like a little decorative element on my charcuterie. <laughs> these are endive leaves with some goat cheese and just, I pulled fennel out of the backyard and those are little microgreens for a little bit of color. So those will go on there as well. You need something salty and pickled because it's, it's like we're mixing all these flavors, we're mixing all these textures, but you know, we got our sweet, we got our crackers, we got our meat and our fats, you know, and the meat and the cheese. And then what goes great is olives. Olives are perfect for a charcuterie board. These are one of my favorites because they're stuffed with garlic. Super tasty. So everybody has to eat one of those. Everyone has to eat that because we'll all have <laughs> dragon breath. And then I love little pickles. <laughs> What do, you, what, what do you call those? Girl? I call these corchicons, but that's not the way you say it. How, what are you, how do you say it I, right? I think it's a cornichon. Let's see, that's the French accent. She obviously studied French. I didn't. <laughs> so, also black olives. Some other elements I like to put on my board are spreads. You gotta have honey. 
and with a piece of honeycomb is just beautiful. So that's a lovely touch. I, those are spicy almonds, which we'll put on the board as well. This is a black boysenberry, sorry, not a blackberry, but a boysenberry jam. You got your sweet, need a little sweet. And then I made a beet hummus, which is such lovely color to go with all of this. To round it out and kind of complete the look, I love natural elements. So I clipped some rosemary, which will stick on the board around cheeses or whatever that we'll use on the board. I also have some nasturtium flowers, which are super lovely on a board. I just pulled these radishes out of the garden and I love leaving the leaves on the radishes because it just it's a natural looking, fresh gardeny vibe. And then of course fennel, these soft little fronds make everything just kind of softens edges and softens little corners. And then we can slice up some blood oranges and add it on there or limes. Apricots are in season, peaches are in season because it's summertime. Use whatever's in season. Grapes are fabulous. I don't have that here to show you, but I do have boysenberries, some of those mini peppers, cucumbers, carrots, because you gotta have your veggies for the dips. And if people don't want crackers, they can use the veggies. Well, I saw you have a little bit of dried fruit. Mm -hmm. And um, I also saw some, is that a tapenade? Oh, all, yes, oh. olive tapenade. Yummy. That's one of our spreads. So we have a few choices in the spread department, a little salty yumminess with some sweetness. And then the hummus has a garlicky, yummy flavor, earthy flavor. So yeah, so we have variety. So now let's take it outside where we're gonna have our party tonight. We've got some chicks coming over. We're doing charcuterie and let's go assemble it. Let's show you how it's done. Wow, look. It's amazing. It's a bounty, huh? It's so beautiful. Oh, I love doing charcuterie. So thank you so much for following and just watching the process of putting this together because it is a great way to bless people when they come to your home because it looks lovely and there's lots of variety and it's yummy. So mm. I didn't you have fun helping oh me? Oh my gosh, it was so amazing. Yeah, and just to see you. it all come together, fun to do together too, mm -hmm. but I learned so much and thank you for doing this. Oh, it's absolutely. So my much pleasure. fun. We're waiting on the girls to get here yeah. so we can dig in. Yeah. But if you want to find out how to do one of these charcuterie boards yourself, go to our website at salt-clay.com and you can get all the details on where we found things and what you can do uh, to put it all together. So. Hope you check it out. Yeah. Thank you so much.